Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time on this Wednesday night. What are you guys a little extra anxious this evening? What's wrong? Something happened today? My God. What a day that the Tennessee Titans had in the free agent process. In fact, we're going to speak to a bunch of your free agents tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. I am going to turn the radio show over to Lucas uh, for a period of time. I'm going to zip on down to St. Thomas Sports Park. I'll be doing the radio show from Zoom the rest of the time. But yeah, you guys act like something uh, something big happened today. Perhaps a wide receiver. Not all of this excitement just for uh, just for Mason Rudolph, but I assume you're here for other reasons. Anyway, we're happy to have you guys here for another episode of the Primetime Show. Titans get a deal done with Calvin Ridley. Four years, $92 million, 50 guaranteed. We will talk about it together. Uh, we will go through the process of how it is that they nailed this trade over the course of the last 20, or excuse me, nailed this contract over the course of the last 24 hours. We'll get into expectations for Calvin Ridley, and we'll look forward to what you have to say about this particular transaction. We're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. We need you guys to share the broadcast around wherever you are spending your time with us. We would appreciate you doing so. If you're hanging out on Twitter, uh, I am retweeting it. You can retweet it too. Retweet the show in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen if you're so inclined. If you're on Facebook Live, you can share. Share now to public. That is in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And if you're on YouTube or Twitch, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to tell a friend to do the same. BF says, I'm a podcast slut. Just got done with the install. Well, we appreciate you. Listen, uh, it's only uh, you're only a slut if you do it for free, and that is an important clarification. Calvin Ridley sure as hell ain't doing it for free, so we'll talk about it throughout the course of this evening. NJ Titans fan says, Buck, did you hear any rumors that the Titans were in this, or were you surprised like all of us? Listen, it would be real easy for me to get up here in front of you guys and say, you know what, I heard some rumblings in the background. I heard this, I heard that. That would be disingenuous. The, the thing that I have heard the loudest coming out of the facility has been Legereus Sneed. Nobody. I'm telling you, nobody. Not Adam Schefter, not Ian Rappaport, not, uh, well, Jimmy Wyatt probably knew, but too, because Jimmy Wyatt knows everything. But, you know, Jimmy, uh, notably quiet at this time of year as the team waits to announce official transactions. Rand Carthon, Chad Brinker, uh, David Mulligetta, who is Calvin Ridley's agent at Athletes First, they kept this shit on the low, kids. They didn't let a peep of it get out. Everybody, ha- and listen, I, I, again, I would not lie to you and say that if I heard something, I would absolutely tell you that I heard something. Nobody heard shit about Calvin Ridley to the Titans. So, well done by Ran. Uh, well done by the Titans organization. Well done by his representation to get Calvin Ridley a mega payday. The, the Titans scoop Calvin Ridley out from under the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they have, for the second offseason in a row, beaten the New England Patriots out for a top-of-market wide receiver. That is as crazy a thing. At it's, it's impossible to keep anything quiet in this league. All right, this league is full of gossips. It doesn't matter if it's area scouts. It doesn't matter if it's assistant GMs. It doesn't matter if it's agents. It doesn't matter if it's media people. This league is full of gossips. And the idea that they could pull this off so seamlessly the way that they did and not have it out there until they were ready to put pen to paper after free agency officially began, began. it's one of the more impressive uh, business transactions that I've seen conducted by this organization. I don't I don't love getting I don't love not being in the know. Okay. My job is to be in the know. And the fact that I got God as much as anybody else out there, I, all I can do is uh is tip my proverbial cap to the Titans organization. Well done by them to keep it low. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising. I'm proud as always to be presented to you by the great folks at the Ashton Real Estate Group of Remax Advantage. Go to GaryAshton.com, get your dream address without the stress. The Intel Edge you need to succeed can be found with the Ashton team. Of course, you know that Two Rivers Ford, quality American-made Ford vehicles and award-winning customer service is what they offer to you. 
Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com for the best car buying experience out there. Zen Sports, download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN that you see directly over my shoulder. That will get you involved in the same game parlays and up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. Zensports.com for more information and True Math Fitness in the Gulch. True Math Fitness, the best way to work out, a new way to work out for the best version of you. Go to TrueMathFitness.com for your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident. They will get you right. Uh, Calvin Ridley is going to help get the Titans right. Now, he's not an end-all, be-all, one-player type of solution, but he's a bigger piece to the larger puzzle. The question that a lot of people are are putting out there, or the narrative, a, a lot of the narrative that I've seen propagated out there is, did the Tennessee Titans overpay for Calvin Ridley? Well, we can uh, talk about this, and I'll pose you the question this way. Fair or foul? Four years, $92 million, $50 million guaranteed. Is that an overpay for Calvin Ridley? We'll talk about it together. It's your Two Rivers Ford take. As always, it's made possible by Two Rivers Ford. Like I said, quality American-made Ford vehicles and that award-winning customer service that you've come to expect over 40 years of doing business here in Middle Tennessee, Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com. They will get you right with the South's most trusted Ford dealership. Overpay, fair or foul for Calvin Ridley. Paul Arias says fair. Uh, Chris Chris Frazier says, yes, I told y'all we overpaying for wide receivers. Keith Dove uh, apparently doesn't understand how to play the game because the game is fair or foul, and he just says over. I understand your meaning, but that is what it is. BF says fair, but I want to crown somebody. Um, Paul Richards said, I had sticker shock at first, but $23 million per isn't so bad. Well, it certainly surprised everybody in the NFL to see this transaction come down. Nobody had the Titans on their radar. Rand Carthon gets the deal done for Calvin Ridley anyway. Sources say the Tennessee Titans are signing Jaguar star receiver Calvin Ridley. Listen to this massive deal. Four years, $92 million for Calvin Ridley. $50 $50 million fully guaranteed in this deal, negotiated by David Mulligetta and Reza Azam of Athletes First. Calvin Ridley turns 30 this season, 30, and he gets a massive, massive deal from the Titans. Everyone has been assuming, I think this whole time, that it was going to be the Jaguars, is going to be the Patriots. No, no, it is the Tennessee Titans quietly lurking, working, and now landing a top free agent receiver, a massive Massive move for the Titans. Well done, uh, Ian Rappaport. They're delivering Ooh. some bombshell news on just as we were talking about, right? The, the deal that would have sent the third rounder uh, to the Atlanta Falcons um, as part of uh, that Unbelievable. trade a couple years ago now. All right, so Calvin Ridley is signing with the Tennessee Titans. Rhett Lewis, Steve Weich, uh, Brian Baldinger, thanks to Ian Rappaport for that news. So what do we, what do we think here? What do we think is Baldy? What about this AFC South arms race all yeah. of a sudden? Last year, this yeah. was a division we thought was an absolute joke. Now, every team in this division is starting to load up, especially after what Houston did. So now you've got Will Levis. That's who they're going with the quarterback. You add Calvin Ridley. Oh, DeAndre Hopkins is here as well. They have signed Tony Pollard. Traylon Burks. Still Tra- there. They've got Traylon Burks right, right there. They've got Tajay Spears. So you're seeing an upgrade in speed, right? Playmakers on this offense. This is something. Now that they decided to change gears from a Derrick Henry-based run-centric offense to now potential explosive players in the open field. So this is, again, Callahan coming there as head coach, changing the direction of how this offense, now they're going to be playing geometry instead of playing physical inside of a phone booth football. You like that? I was always more of a geometry guy than a trigonometry. So that's courtesy of the NFL Network. Calvin Ridley getting the deal done. So we have Royal Wright says, so we have D hop and Ridley and Pollard and Spears to catch the ball. And all of that is before the NFL draft. Now the question is fair or foul. Did the Titans overpay for Calvin Ridley? We don't have uh last I checked and I've, I've looked at spot track uh, before the show started just to confirm that we haven't had cap hit deals 
or cap hit specifics on Calvin Ridley. Uh, spot track. So we don't know what his cap hit will be in the first year, in the second year, in the third year, so on and so forth. Spot track says at $23 million per year, Calvin Ridley's four year, $92 million contract with the Titans makes him the ninth highest average paid receiver in football. His reported $50 million guaranteed ranks 10th among active wide receivers. Did the Titans overpay or not? Did they overpay? Yes. Is it fair that they overpaid? Yes. The Titans just paid the We Suck Luxury Tax. They paid it on Lloyd Cushenberry, the center. They paid it on Calvin Ridley. The football team has been terrible the last two seasons. The football team is devoid of legitimate speed. The football team is devoid of legitimate talent. This team has been in a state of outright rot, okay, for the past, what, 2020 draft, 2021 draft, 2022 draft. You're now just, you have, over the course of the previous two seasons, 22 and 23, been paying for the sins of John Robinson's misses in the draft and in free agency. You absolutely needed to pay top of market money for a wide receiver because you don't have any wide receivers that are worth a damn beyond DeAndre Hopkins. This is something that bad teams have to do. They have to spend to convince players that this is a place worth playing for. This is the thing about it, okay? The Jags did this all the time. The Jags have had varying levels of success with it, right? But going back to the Christian Kirk offseason, they paid the We Suck luxury tax. They knew that they were going to need a reliable target for Trevor Lawrence. They knew that in Doug Peterson's offense, he was going to be worth the money. Christian Kirk gave a bunch of people a sticker shock in the same offseason that I think AJ was traded. Uh, I think that Tyreek Hill was also traded in that offseason. Uh, that was the same offseason as uh, DeAndre, uh, or excuse me, De- Devontae Adams, his deal with the Raiders. The Titans paying the We Suck Luxury Tax is just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You have all this money to spend. What the bleep else are you going to do with it? Anybody who thinks that the Titans overspent on these players, Pollard, Cushenberry, Awuze, uh, Ridley, ignores the fact that the Titans don't have any players of their own worth spending on. This is something that absolutely had to be done. This is something that was unavoidable. This is something that's not going to bother you worth a shit when the cap goes up $10 million to $12 million again next year. He's going to be looking super affordable, just like Jeff Simmons was after he did that deal last offseason, 30 mil against the cap. Oh, Jeff's cheap now. This is something that is so ridiculous that people would stick to well, they paid too much money for him. They paid too much money for him. Oh, my God, what are we going to do with a $23 million wide receiver? You know what you're going to do? You're going to score more than 23, or excuse me, you're going to score more than 17 and a half points per game, and you're not going to make me want to take a drill bit to my temple every time I watch a football team play. This is absolutely something that was essential. And the idea that people would be pearl clutching or whining, look how red my neck is getting with those neck veins. Jesus Christ, this, this idea, this notion pisses me off so much that people would have issue with what it is that the Tennessee Titans just did here. The lux- the We Suck Luxury Tax is absolutely essential for the Titans to get in on some of the best talent this offseason. They signed the best wide receiver that was available on the free agent market. They signed the best center that was available on the free agent market. They're trying to give your quarterback some level of support. And you know what? He doesn't cost very much money. So why don't you spend it elsewhere on players that matter? This is absolutely something that had to be done. If you think the Titans overpaid, you don't understand how the NFL works. You don't understand the state that your football team has been in. This is an essential part of the process to get this football team right. And the idea that people would be pocket watching when your money has absolutely nothing to do with the money that they are spending. This is Amy Adams Strunk money. If she's good with spending the $23 million a year on a wide receiver, good luck. Ah, God bless her. Well done by Amy. Well done by Rand. Well done by Chad Brinker. The Titans needed this. They have no talent. This is a talented player. It immediately helps DeAndre Hopkins. It immediately helps Tajay Spears. It immediately helps Will Levis. And I'm going to explain to you from Greg Cosell what, how it is that uh, this is uh, that this is going to help all of those parties here in just a second. My man Rand went out there and cooked, okay? And I'm not talking just like, 
cooking ramen noodles over the stovetop. I'm talking Walter White out here cooking something, cooking something that's going to make a lot of money, cooking something that's going to lead to dividends in the future, cooking something that is going to lead to more than 17 damn points per game. I'm tired of it, all right? No, they didn't overpay. (laughs) They paid the proper price. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've been ha- I, That's been sitting on my shoulders for two seasons watching this football team screw around and not do anything worth a damn offensively. The fact that they have competent wide receiver play, all of this before the NFL draft. Oh, it's like an oasis in the desert. <laughs> I don't have an oasis. All I have is my Essentia smart water. So I'll drink that instead. I've worked myself up here. I want TDs. Calvin Ridley scores TDs. That's how we're doing it uh, moving forward into the future. Now, how they supplement, because it's not done, right? They still have a bunch of needs all over the place. They still have uh, needs at corner. They still have needs at safety. They need defensive linemen, both edge and interior. This is not something uh, This is not something that you can just take and be like, all right, Titans, Titans win in the AFC South in 2024. No. They they may not, they still may not win the AFC South, even given all the moves that they made today. And they did sign a backup quarterback, worth noting. That's an important move. And Mason Rudolph did play pretty pretty decent football down the stretch for Pittsburgh. Vernon Sanford says, I lost weight on that rant. I think I'm probably the weight of your football team dragging me down for the past two years, playing this ungodly style of football that does not result in any points. Yes, I have that weight, hopefully, lifted off my shoulders. Anyway. Uh, so as we talk about the idea of an overpay, first, it's not an overpay. It's paying the proper price for a football team that didn't have any players worth paying. And now they have a pair, a player worth paying And Hopkins and Ridley. It's a four-year deal. It makes Hopkins, uh, contract situation much more interesting because of course he's on an expiring contract, but yes, this is absolutely the right decision for the Tennessee Titans to cash in a to Z sports. Primetime is presented by true math fitness in the Gulch. Uh, for those of you commenting on the skinniness on the neck veins, uh, shout out to True Math Fitness because they helped me lose 48 pounds while I was working out with their great training staff. A new way to work out for the best version of you, True Math Fitness, has you covered. They are there to help you. No workout is ever recycled or repeated. They will work with you either in the group uh, fitness classes, which I personally enjoy. Personal training is also something that I take advantage of. I'm not going to make my personal training session tomorrow, however, because Worth is skiing. Worth Campbell, the owner and the head trainer at TrueMav, is uh, off on a skiing trip. So skip personal training tomorrow. That's okay. TrueMav is the best place for me to get a workout in whenever I want to get a workout in because I'm a member and I have access to their open gym just like you can be if you go to TrueMavFitness.com and sign up for your first workout free. Um, Corey Cartwright says, You said last night you didn't have a favorite football team, but you sound like a passionate Titans fan. Okay, this is the difference. All right, Corey, I don't have a football team. All right, it allows me to do my job in a much better way. Do you know how much I hate watching your football team play when they suck? You know how, you know how, what a drag that is on my life? You know, you know how much, you know how much worse of an attitude it gives me? I don't have a favorite football team, but the team that I am under contract to cover for the foreseeable future, I would prefer them play good football then play bad football. Now, ideally, and I'll let you in on a little, a dirty little media secret, Corey, I need your football team to go about 10 and seven every year. I need them to have some slumps. I need them to give me something to sink my teeth into when I, when there's something compelling, some drama, something like that. It can't all go perfectly. I don't want a 17 and no football team. Okay. I want a good football team that scores points that has interesting players, ideally with good quotes. Although I don't know if I'm going to get that moving forward in the future. I'm, I've, I'm holding out hope for Will Levis. Will Levis a decent quote. Um, but I need a 10 and 7 football team every year. Not seven straight losses in route to six and ten, not six and eleven and just hopeless every time. Not sad boy football players in the locker room every time I go to talk to them. It's got nothing to do with me being a fan other than me wanting to be entertained. You guys can change the channel at home. I have to sit there like bird box and have my eyes held open while I watch them struggle to convert on third down. That's my viewing experience. That's why I'm excited about Calvin Ridley, because I like points, all right? That's how we look at this thing. Anyway, uh, so as we uh, as we look at the, uh, at the Titans and their situation and with Calvin Ridley specifically, the question that I would like to pose to you guys is this on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. 
who does Calvin Ridley, uh, who does the Calvin Ridley signing benefit the most? Let me know on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. We'll talk about it together right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. Zensports.com for your VIP play. If you feel like your Zen Sports play qualifies for VIP consideration, you can submit it at zensports.com slash VIP. They also have same game parlays, which are awesome for you to get involved on all the action. 10 boosted same game parlays for NBA and NHL every single day. That's 10 bets, each with a 10% boost, so you can bet every single one of them. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line, 1 800 889 9789. Terms and conditions do apply. No danger wager limited to plus 500 odds to qualify. Boosted odds are derived from equivalent parlay bets offered in Tennessee. Must be 21 and up in Tennessee to bet. Zensports.com for more information. All right, I've cooled off a little bit. My my neck veins and, and forehead veins have settled down. I won't scream at you all anymore unless you want me to, unless you piss me off. We'll, we'll get there perhaps throughout the course of the show. Um, so who does this benefit the most? Brandon says me. Yes, it benefits me greatly. Love this. <laughs> I I am so, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm cautiously optimistic. Now, Levis has to be worth a damn. That's the thing. It's it's funny that the thing that I'm least certain about on your offense is your quarterback because he is the only thing that kind of bailed out me last season from an interest level for you guys because God knows if Levis wasn't there to take over for Tannehill, I would have lost all my viewership, and that's what I care about. Viewership, radio ratings, and all would have gone to shit, uh, and that's the thing that I care about the most. So I need Levis to come through, and I don't know if he's – I don't know what he is just yet. I don't know that he's – Good. I don't know that he's bad. I just know that there's plenty of concerns um, that I still think that he needs to continue to address. Jonathan says it benefits the fans the most. That's okay. It can absolutely benefit the fans the most. Fans want to see touchdowns scored too. It uh, Everything's better. So many things are magnified when your football team can't score. Um, Josh Sabata says, you confident in the left tackle we don't have or right? Well, I feel okay about your center. Um, and you still have to go through the draft. You're not going to find a left tackle in free agency, so I think that uh, I think I think that with that being said, it does. We'll, we'll talk more about how it might inform your draft strategy later on um, in the process because I do think that it does have a significant impact. The Calvin Ridley signing does significantly impact the uh, the um, the upcoming draft strategy. Doug Young says Traylon Burks. Oh, man, in an ideal world, they'll draft another wide receiver to get Traylon Burks on the bench, man. I don't want to watch that dude play anymore. It's just, it's so, it makes me sad, to be honest with you. The guy the guy has done nothing of, of consequence since he arrived here. He's had, like, I think I could count four games that he has been a meaningful contributor in Green Bay on Thursday night football in the 2022 season. He's had two decent games against the Bengals, and then he was a big part of them beating the Chargers in overtime at Nissan Stadium this year. But beyond that, like I, I hope that they draft another wide receiver that gets Traylon Burks as far out of the picture as humanly possible. I'm I'm not interested in Kyle Phillips. I'm not interested in Traylon Burks. Draft replacements. Let's all move on um, because that situation has been a failure by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I uh, Chig says uh, Chig or excuse me, Corey D. Jackson, not Chig. Cordy Jackson says Chig is about to have a crazy year. I'm telling you now. Chig is also in that. Chig is less in that category than Phillips or, or Burks, but Chig has plenty to prove uh, himself. I would, uh, I would like to. I don't know. I, I, I don't trust any of the three of them. Right. I, I don't trust any of the three of them until such time as they give me reason to do so. So until such time as I have reason to be any kind of a believer in the three of those players, I'm just kind of considering them off to the side. And, and hopefully this coaching staff in this front office continues to address the skill position in ways that upgrades them beyond Chig and Traylon Burks and, and Kyle Phillips, because those guys haven't haven't done anything of consequence in the this is coming up on th on year three for those dudes. And you still don't know what the hell they have in them. I think it, it benefits DeAndre Hopkins in a huge way. Um, and this was something that I talked to Greg Cosell of NFL Films about. In fact, Greg reached out and texted me. Bert, can you, uh, I don't see that graphic on my end. Can you throw the graphic of Greg Cosell's quote up from the article that I wrote earlier today? This is what Greg texted me. Ridley is a great signing. 
Uh, he can line up anywhere in the formation. He is a great route runner. He helps define the quarterback. He helps define the throw for the quarterback. Now, Matt Harmon, many of you know him from receptionperception.com. He also does fantasy football a- analysis for Yahoo Sports. He broke this down on Twitter today. Uh, Ridley had considerable success both against man and zone coverages, success rates on his routes in both man and zone coverages. Having spent last year with Jacksonville, Doug Peterson, and by the way, Nick Holtz, who's the offensive coordinator here, formerly the passing game coordinator from the Jacksonville Jaguars, something to keep in mind. They deployed him primarily as the team's X receiver. So you hear X, you hear Z, you hear Y a lot. What does it mean? Well, the X receiver is typically on the outside of the formation and lined up on the line of scrimmage. Now, you can run a variety of different routes as an X receiver, but what it does, thank you, Bert, I appreciate the uh, the assistance there. What it does for a guy like Calvin Ridley, who's not your prototypical X receiver, is it kind of pigeonholes him in a way that does not allow him to showcase the full extent of his route running capabilities. Calvin Ridley was the best wide receiver that Jacksonville had last year. And Jacksonville's offense had some struggles. And by the way, Ridley had six drops. Uh, he was, uh, while he did have eight touchdowns, more touchdowns than drops, that's an important stat. There were some drops that caused Jacksonville some issues, and that's not something to completely ignore, even though it was his first year back after a calendar year off from football dealing with that gambling suspension that he sat out the 2022 season with. And he basically didn't play in 2021 either after he uh, removed himself from the Falcons team after a certain point. It was a weird situation that continued to uh, devolve and then ultimately resulted in the gambling suspension. So Hopkins is your prototypical X wide receiver here in Tennessee. So if you can line Hopkins up on the outside and make him your prototypical X, and you can either deploy Calvin Ridley as your Z or as your slot and allow him to run a more diverse route tree to give him more opportunities to showcase what he is capable of doing, the separation that he's capable of creating without him being, you know, what Hopkins had to be last year here for the Titans, which is their X receiver, which is their best receiver, which is their best outside receiver. Ridley is going to benefit from having Hopkins. Hopkins is going to benefit from having Ridley. They're both going to work to the benefit of Will Levis. And ultimately the offensive line is still a question. They haven't fixed that problem yet, though. This goes a long way towards it. I think it allows you to deploy Calvin Ridley in a much more in a much more um, effective and a much more efficient situation. Jack Penfold says Buck demoing his X and his O shops. Listen, anything I know, anything I pretend to know about football, I have I have gotten from doing a podcast for three years with Greg Cosell, Greg, and and talking to coaches. But the only way that I know, the only reason I know how to talk to coaches about this shit is because of Greg. And even then, there's plenty of there's plenty of holes in my football knowledge that I couldn't I I Cosell has forgotten more about football than I could ever hope to know but you do take some stuff away you do absorb some stuff after a, a, a period of time of, of talking to these people and and talking in the way that they discuss football as opposed to the way that the rest of us discuss football which is looking at counting stats and stupid shit but I think that when you when you talk about Ridley and how often he was deployed primarily as the X receiver in the Jacksonville offense this allows him to slide into a role that he was more effective at when he played with Julio Jones in Atlanta, right? He was all over the place, in the slot, outside, lining up in a variety of different uh, facets. This is a great signing for that reason. Now, the drops, he's got to get that corrected. That's not acceptable. And he did still eclipse 1,000 yards, but the Jags' offense was never really what it was supposed to be, right? Trevor Lawrence, and part of that's Trevor Lawrence, Part of that is uh, part of that is Ridley and drops. Part of that is injuries that every team sustains. Part of that is poor offensive line play. Jags Jags had a lot of things go less. Uh, had a lot of things that were suboptimal compared to expectation. Right? I think everybody, even even the biggest Titans fan and Jags hater, which many of you are, would say that you expected more out of what Jacksonville put out on the field last year. But I think that this is a uh, that this is a situation that is going to benefit these two wide receivers. Is going to be, and, and you hope that a bit. Listen, I, you know, I know I sound like a, a Chig and Traylon and Kyle Phillips hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just like I don't I don't think about them. <laughs> I, they, they don't they don't cross my mind, right? Cuz they don't do anything today. If this can benefit them, then that's phenomenal. I hope that they're able to reclaim 
some level of competency to their NFL careers because right now they haven't done jack shit. But I, I don't think about those guys hardly at all anymore. And I love that Calvin Ridley has given me, given me even less reason to have expectations for guys who have underachieved here. Uh, so we'll see. And obviously it benefits Levis. Obviously it benefits Levis. Um, David Brown says, cannot pass on neighbors at seven. Uh, listen, if he's there, take him. If neighbors or Odunze are, is there at seven, take him. If both of those guys go and you're sitting with the tackle, I'm totally fine with trading back, right? I think that there are plenty of wide receivers in this draft that can help you. I think that you already have the, the main need addressed in Ridley with Hopkins and, and having the, the other guys that you do have on the roster right now. Uh, somebody asked the Titans out on Sneed. I don't think this rules them out on Sneed at all. Um, that that has simmered pretty substantially. I don't know that that's happening, but the I, it's still it's still got a little life. I just don't think it's I don't think it's as concrete as it felt like it might be yesterday. Anyway, um, Andrew Martin says this helps Burks the most, makes him wide receiver three. No, I hope that they draft another wide receiver. Like I said, I want Traylon Burks on the bench for the foreseeable future. I don't, you can't trust him. He's not reliable. I want a reliable wide receiver. I think Troy Frank, Franklin fits that mold. I think that Xavier Worthy fits that mold. Xavier Worthy has some drops, so maybe Xavier Worthy premature. But team speed, I there are plenty of it. You can do plenty of it. You can get plenty of other wide receivers to disappoint you as much as Traylon Burks has disappointed you. I think that you can, I think that you can substantially upgrade that entire unit in this draft. And I think seven overall. Like I said, if the receiver is there draft him. If not, trade back. You can find a tackle later on in the first. All right. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to rising and falling in the comments on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Whose stock rose? Whose stock fell this week in sports? Let me know in the comments. As I said, and we will talk about it together, Cole Murphy, our good buddy, says, what do you think it will take for Casey to move Sneed? honestly, I think the Titans would have to straight up swap seconds for that. And I don't know that Kansas City wouldn't ask for more than that, but I think at minimum you're talking about swapping seconds because Casey is picking at the bottom of the second round. We talked about this on the radio show today. Casey is picking at the bottom of the second round, and obviously the Titans are picking the top. They've got the 38th pick in this uh, in this draft. So with that, we know Casey needs wide receivers. We know that We know they need them worse than air. I think it would take at minimum a swap of the second round pick. I would be, I don't think they're they're fool enough to ask for the seventh overall pick. Sneed's not worth that, especially if you have to pay him on the back end. But I think there are plenty of, of other teams that can add, plenty of other teams that can that can offer them a first round pick that's not the seventh overall pick, right? That's something to kind of keep an eye on. But I think at minimum it would be a swap of of second round picks to get to get Legarius Sneed. Uh, Wesley Williams, Williams says you do it at that cost. Well, certainly the Ridley thing helps you, um, given that the wide receiver need feels less urgent. A F O says buck stock fell offensive line or bust round one trade up if needed. Well, no, that's not, that's certainly not going to be your football team. So are you saying that ran Cal ran, uh, ran Callahan ran Carthon and Brian Callahan stock is down? Cause that's not the approach that they're going to take to this draft. It's not offensive line or bust in round one. Uh, that just speaks to a level of desperate. And listen, it does speak to a level of desperation that you have. That level of desperation is completely earned. I'm not going to fault you at all for feeling that way. But you cannot discount. Uh, you cannot discount that that strategy because it is not a strategy that your team is going to ignore. Just something to keep an eye on. Uh, Chase says, "I need to talk about the stash. What do I need to talk about the, st the stash?" Speaks for itself. What do I need to talk about the stash for? That is what it is. Uh, Frazier says, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's people arguing amongst themselves. Field stock went down, says Hill and Hill. Like a heart attack. That's, man, nobody's market has shrunk more than Justin Fields at this point. That's a that's a really tough scene for a player who was expecting to, uh, expecting to get paid, I think, significant money um, from whichever team traded for him and you know, unless the Vikings, unless the Vikings are going to do it, I don't, I don't know who would. I, I mean, we'll see what happens with Justin Fields, but it doesn't feel like a, a good situation right now. Definitely, him and Tannehill both, their market has shrunk, given the way that the quarterback situation worked out. Uh, so stock up. Well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to phrase this exactly. Stock up to the Titans social media team and to the Titans organization. 
because I not, not even to do with the free agency signings, though I'm sure many of you have good vibes about uh, good vibes about the organization for the moves that they made today because they did sign additional offensive line depth. They signed a backup quarterback. They signed Calvin Ridley, and they brought back Nick Folk, which is big, the kicker. You have no more kicker issues as long as Nick Folk remains consistent, and he was very, very efficient last year to his credit. The reason why I say the Titan social media team and the Titans organization is because it's it's rare when you can get me to be emotional. <laughs> And I'm not just, and I, and I say that not to run things through a personal prism, although I do run things through a personal prism way more often than I should. And you guys are quick to remind me of that, which I appreciate you for. Got to keep me humble. But when I saw their post to Derrick Henry today, I'm not an emotional person about things to do with the Titans. I'm not an emotional person about the things, uh, the things, the things going on with the team that I cover, but I am emotional about human interest and people good genuinely good good human beings who have done good things not just for a football team but for a community Derek Henry is absolutely that I have such a great level of respect not just for the football player not just for the future hall of famer that he probably is at some point and I wish him all the luck in the world in Baltimore I hope he wins a Super Bowl with the Ravens but because I have seen Derrick Henry, um, because I have seen Derrick Henry do so much for Middle Tennessee, for people who have less than than some of us are fortunate to have in our lives, because Derrick comes from lesser means and continues to give back to Uly, Florida, to Middle Tennessee, to tornado victims, to people, you know, to to pay away the layaway the way that he does for Christmas, to take. Uh, kids who are you know, part of the Boys and Girls Club shoe shopping and stuff like that. Derrick Henry is an unbelievable person for a variety of different reasons. And I saw the tribute video that the Titans put together today, and it allowed me to relive some of Derrick's best moments, all of which I've covered. I've covered every single Derrick Henry game that he's played since he was drafted by the Titans in 2016. That was my first full-time season covering this football team, and that was Derek's rookie year. Watching this video today, and I'm getting ready to play, play it for you guys, allowed me to relive some of those moments that have just kind of been in the back of my head, right? I don't, I don't think a lot about the AFC championship run anymore because that was five years ago. I don't think about the Jags Thursday night football game where he's rushing for a single, uh, or rather a franchise single game rushing record and scoring four touchdowns in the process because it happened an eternity ago. But getting to relive a lot of those moments through the prism of this video was was re it got me. It really got me. And I think that you a lot of you guys will feel the same way. This is a, a credit to the Titan social media team. In the 16 NFL draft, the Tennessee Titans choose. Oh, he's done it again! Hope I did good. Hope I like it. Turning on the speed, Derrick Henry, stiff arm. Henry, another step into a tackle, and he's taken off. Trying to turn the corner, and he does. Up the sideline. Henry to the end zone. Touchdown. Hopefully, I was an inspiration to all the young kids and everybody in the community. Just thank y'all so much. Man, God is good. And tighten up, baby. For the title, and he's going to break it on a big one. He's going to get the title. Wow. Wow. 40, cutting back inside. The 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the king. Henry, breaking free. 20, off to the races. And there goes Derrick Henry. Henry has got major speed for a big Henry. man. Looking for a little breathing room, and they get that and plenty more. Derrick Henry still going. Stays in bounds. He might go. 99 yards for the touchdown. That gets you in your feels a little bit, doesn't it? I, uh, you want to know who I'm a fan? You, you want to know what football team I'm a fan of? 
I'll tell you right now, I'm a fan of whatever football team that dude plays for. I I'm there covering Derrick Henry. That's the first, it's, it's the first time that I've legitimately felt a level of fandom about a player. He is, he's half man, half amazing. He is otherworldly. He is somebody who I don't think you could recreate in a, in a, in a Madden creator play, create a player. If you tried Derek Henry is truly the definition of the word awesome in so many different ways. So I, uh, you know, I, I feel, I feel sad. I really do feel sad for Titans fans that he's, that he's leaving. I, I personally would have liked to have seen him selfishly. I would have liked to have seen him end his career here. Um, because I I've enjoyed covering him. It's just it's such a pleasure to watch that dude work and to go about it. But uh so I will forever be a fan of that particular player. Wherever he plays, I'm for him. I hope he wins. I hope he wins it all. I hope he uh makes it to the Hall of Fame. I hope Derrick Henry uh I hope Derrick Henry goes on to to do whatever it is that he wants to do in life and I know he'll do great things beyond football right? Because he's more than just a football player. And that I think is what makes him the definition of awesome. But yeah, that, uh, that video got, got me a little bit guys. It's, it's, it's weird watching eight years of your, of, of a player's career. And also, I mean, this is coming up on, on my ninth season. So eight years covering Derrick Henry, eight years covering the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's just tough. It's tough if you're a Titans fan. So Christopher White says, nah, never rooting for the rapper. Well, you better hope you never play him. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think he's going to give you as much grace as many, as many of us are giving him to tonight, but I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd love to see him do it. I'd, I'd love to see him do it. Even if it is for Robert Walsh's favorite football team, I don't want Robert to be happy, but I want Derek Henry to be happy. So that is what it is. Have a great rest of your evening radio show tomorrow. We are going to have the, uh, the new free agents, Calvin Ridley, I, well, let me let me say this. I don't know if Calvin Ridley is going to be made available to the media tomorrow, but the Titans are holding a press conference at St. Thomas Sports Park with all of the media invited, so I'm assuming that they're not just going to trot respectfully to Morgan Cox. I'm assuming that Morgan Cox is not going to be the, the player that we're talking to tomorrow. So they haven't given us specifics on which free agents will speak, but uh, and they haven't officially agreed. The team hasn't announced the Calvin Ridley deal just yet. So something they haven't announced Cushenberry, Pollard, Ridley. Hell, I don't even think they've announced Kenneth Murray, but I would imagine that you would see a, a flurry of those transactions tomorrow morning, announcing those deals officially. And then they will speak tomorrow at the podium. We'll carry those press conferences live for you on 104.5 The Zone. They'll be at 1130 a.m. Central Time. If you watch the uh, if you watch the uh, radio show on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch, the same place that you watch this particular show, we'll be able to physically broadcast the live stream from the team onto the radio show broadcast. So uh, check that out from 10 to 1 on 104.5 The Zone. We'll be down at Bridgestone Arena. I'm actually going to leave the radio show early, go to the facility, do the press conference, and do the rest of the radio show. Lucas is going to be at Bridgestone. I'm going to be on Zoom from the facility, and we'll make it all work. So big changes, new football team. You got a night to sleep on it. Enjoy yourselves. Congratulations to your football team. Congratulations to you. It's been a while since Titans fans have had a reason to feel good about something. So I'm glad that you all are not as miserable as you usually are when I sit here and yell at you uh, for an hour every night. But appreciate you guys, as always, for showing up. Like the video on your way out the door. That would be uh, you doing me a solid. And I will talk to you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone. And in fact... I, normally, I'd troll you with the the Mitch Ferkins video to end it. Normally, I'd troll you with the uh, the Colts, the the weird Colts fan in his basement singing about the demise of the Titans. Instead, we'll play the Derrick Henry video again. Two thousand sixteen NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans choose. Oh, he's done it again! If I did good, I like it. Turning on the speed. Trying to turn the corner, and he does. Up the sideline. Henry to the end zone. Touchdown. Hopefully I was an inspiration to all the young kids and everybody in the community. Just thank y'all so much. Man, God is good. And tighten up, baby. Eight for the title, and he's going to break it on a 
big one. He's going to get the title. Oh, 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 40. Cutting back inside. To 50. To the 40. To the 30. To the 20. To the 10. To the 5. To the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the king. Henry breaking free. 20. Off to the races. And there goes Derrick Henry. Henry has got major speed for a big Henry. man. Looking for a little breathing room, and they get that and plenty more. Derrick Henry still going. 